Well, welcome back everyone to the City Conservation Center. Hope you guys are all having wonderful days so far. My name is Leaf and it's so great to have you guys back here for another episode of this series. So today we are rounding up our little Siberian station with the Himalayan brown bear. Now, I know they don't actually cross into Siberia, but I really wanted to build for these guys, not only for Gaboy's and uh, Havoc's beautiful remaster, but also just because they're just gorgeous animals. Oh my god. I know they're not really that common in zoos, uh, but I still really want to include them nonetheless. This is kind of like a kind of throwing all caution to the wind kind of zoo. So we're getting started over here, kind of keeping in line with the rest of our theming throughout here and doing a moated area. Moats are often used for animals like this in case if you don't really want to build like cages or anything. It's really just a aesthetics kind of thing because either way the animal's still going to have as much space as it really does. You just don't have any of like those really obtrusive like you know beams you don't really have any obtrusive mesh or anything like that it's more so an aesthetics thing you're not really changing the size of the habitat but still I'm very happy with how well it came out nonetheless so you can tell we do have it be kind of like a peninsula because the staff do need to access it through some way or another and we do build a nice little care facility back there for our bears nothing really too intense uh, we kind of make it implied, of course. I don't really like to go in and do, like, all the fine details, like, all the holding cages and stuff like that. That's just not my jazz. Uh, that's not really my kind of style, I guess. My style is more so building for the habitats, building for the animals, building for the guests, and that's about it. I have a lot of fun with that, and if I tack on anything else, you guys would not be getting daily YouTube videos from me. But still, I have a lot of fun with it, and I still hope you guys are able to take something away from it. So keeping in line with the rest of our decoration throughout this area, I do want to use a whole bunch of different techniques throughout there. So you can see I do use a few items down there in the trenches down there, so I use some of the Triordia grasses to make it look like it's kind of dead down there, as well as a mix of the new Yorkshire fog grass. Really awesome piece over there, really hope we get some more pieces kind of like that in the future. And we also use a lot of the faux rocks, colored very much online with the temperate rocks, in order to make a nice rock foundation. Now, I was recently able to go to the Bronx Zoo for my birthday. It was super fun, which, by the way, thank you guys all so much for the birthday wishes that literally made my day. Uh, but no, I was able to go there for my birthday with good old Nick, as well as our partners, and it was just super fun. And we were just staring there at the bear exhibit, and I was like, oh my god, I love bears so much. So that's kind of what inspired me to get started on this Himalayan brown bear exhibit. So I'm taking a few pointers from the Bronx Zoo in terms of that from their grizzly bear habitat. Uh, so I'm kind of working over here and trying to make a nice big rock mound in the middle of that. And I'm also doing some work on the exterior of the habitat right there really quickly, just getting the grasses down. Uh, I kind of skip out on the periwinkles for the most part. I do throw down some later down the line, but I figured that the Yorkshire fog grass would be a lot more over bearing in this area but you can see I still try and include enough periwinkle grass over there just to give it a little bit of splash of color it does have the slightly more greener kind of look to it than the other pieces of grass so that's something I really want to include right over there but yeah I was extremely inspired by Bronx Zoo so I really wanted to recreate something kind of like that or at least track down the vibes at least I'm very much a vibes kind of builder uh, so that's kind of like that rock mound right in the middle of there as well as a lot of bamboo. The Bronx Zoo uses a ton of bamboo and it's very cool. Uh, we were actually walking through the zoo and uh, I think we were like in the African section or something like that and like some old lady is like, oh there's a lot of bamboo over here. Must mean we're coming up close to the Asian section and we're like sitting right in front of the Hamadryas baboons. It was just kind of, it was kind of funny. Me and Nick looked at each other it was kind of like, uh, are you serious right now? But still we're having a lot of fun with that. So you can see me really start to get a lot more comfortable with the rocks in here uh one of the things i really wanted to bring up is the fact that i'm not having that much climbing frames in here uh, a lot of stockier bears like the brown bears and stuff like that they don't really climb all that much they don't really climb as much as a sun bear would they don't really climb as much as a black bear would they're very much one of the lower climbing ones uh probably a little bit after polar bears 
So that's kind of my reasoning for not including a lot of climbing frames in here. I do include some so they could actually access the top of the rock, and they look super awesome on that. Be sure to stay around for the cinematics when you guys do get to see that. And I'm also working on the guest area over here as well. I wanted to have a nice kind of like relatively tall fence over here but still have it be nice and open for the guests so I didn't really want to take away from like the openness of this kind of viewing section and we also do a little bit of work on that later down the line once we actually do I think I actually do a lot of like the guest work off stage or at least not recorded I do apologize I was kind of in the groove until I realized I wasn't recording, so that kind of sucks. But you guys get to see the beauty of the habitat later down the line. Uh, I also used a lot of greenery in here as well. Nothing too intense, because I did want to retain like this nice kind of a rocky feel, rocky look to this place. So I use a whole bunch of grasses, I use a whole bunch of periwinkles and stuff like that. And I go back to the Yorkshire Fog Grass because it's such a versatile piece. I really do love it. So making our way throughout this habitat, going all throughout there, and we start to add that all over the place where it makes sense. Usually I start to add grasses and stuff where the animals wouldn't really be. A lot of the times you'll see pacing trails in zoos, which is kind of unfortunate. So the best way to kind of like emulate that, emulate, sorry, uh, is to make a lack of grasses in that area. So you could kind of see like all throughout that ridge over there, there's a distinct lack of plants where the dirt is. And that's because that's where the animals would normally be pacing. After all, the bears are relatively heavy animals. Uh, if you guys are able to lift one, let me know in the comments down below. I'd be very impressed. Uh, but still, you would see these areas kind of be trotting down any grasses that would try and grow there would be quickly smushed under the weight of the bear. So that's something to keep in mind when you are building realistically, is to keep an eye out for where the animal would trek. And it's very much on a case-by-case -case basis for whatever animal you're dealing with. Uh, a lot of the times the bears have a lot more different movement than the hoofstock in the game. So you would have like open fields be more so kind of torn up by hoofstock. But if you're working with bears, you'd have a lot more organic kind of um areas where they would kind of trot over especially a lot more near the rocks if they're trying to climb up to get to a place you'd have some kind of dead areas around there and i'm also working on the backstage holding over there so i think these doors uh like those double gates right there are from bongo hardwood he did such a beautiful job on those one of my favorite bases to use and here i actually am working on the little bit of a bump up over there so that's how they kind of get up to that rocky point right up there uh, and I'm also trying to figure out other unique ways to kind of integrate some stuff throughout here. So I use the jetty platforms over there. They're just a really nice piece to use. They really help it feel like it's kind of like built up from the zookeepers and stuff like that. I always love to see that, like, you know, parts of the zoo where it's like the zookeepers really tried their best to integrate some enrichment stuff into there. Well, my favorite things to do over there. But I also throw a, um, I'm not sure if you guys actually see it, but I do throw a feeder on there. But I use it using free build so it kind of hangs off the side of the habitat. I thought that was pretty fun right there. But making our way throughout here, I also add a, a little bit of a railing. So this is something I kind of work on both on here as well as throughout like the background. Uh, I really wanted to help the guests feel like they were kind of contained in this area. Just to help it feel like they wouldn't really go off the beaten path. So I kind of make use of that with our hedge pieces. So those are custom hedge pieces. I use the cowberry bushes and I kind of rotate them on their sides a little bit to make it feel like they're a lot more decorated hedges. Uh, one of my main problems with the hedges currently in-game is that they don't really have too much texture, but the cowberry bushes have that exact texture that I'm looking for, so you can see me use a lot of those throughout the build. Uh, and I'm also using the rest of the fences that we developed before because they turned out really good. Uh, I'm also using these East Asia rocks down here as well. Uh, they're a really beautiful piece, and I was super excited just to start to use them a bit. And you may be wondering why I loop these pieces on top of each other. It's just because it helps me build in groups a lot better. So if you do duplicate a group, it keeps it at the same level if you hold control. 
so that's what I kind of did over there. Made sure that they were able to be level and stuff like that. Hopefully later down the line I could have like a leaf's tips and tricks to like efficient building and stuff like that. Because being efficient is easily one half of the process in Planet Zoo. Uh, understanding your controls and stuff like that is something I really do really 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 do suggest you guys try and get a handle on. But that is about it for our speed build today. I do apologize I wasn't able to capture all the education building that I really wanted to do. Uh, I did finally use some of the educational pieces we did get in the update and I'm super excited to show those off in a bit. But I do want to thank you guys before we do get there. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for being loyal fans. You guys are always the best out there. You guys always make my day. And yeah, you guys are just the best, period. Oh my god, you're like the best fans in the Planet Zoo community, let alone. Uh, the leaf pile is always staying goaded. Thank you guys so much for watching, I really do appreciate it. If this is your first time here, I really do welcome you into the leaf pile. But, either all that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. See you all in the next video, take care, and have the most wonderful of wonderful days. Bye bye now.